These are the lessons from Leah's life. Write them down real quick. Number one, lessons from Leah. A man can compliment me, but he cannot validate me. A man can compliment me, but he cannot validate me. Stop looking for anyone to validate you outside of God. Other people can celebrate, they can offer their thoughts, but sometimes people don't see it all. So you've got to be able to get into the presence of God, study your word to know who you are in Christ Jesus. Number two, people may not see my true value, but God does. God sees you. He made you for his purpose. And if by chance there are people who don't see it, that's on them. It doesn't change you. And stop minimizing who you are to make insecure people feel better about themselves. If your dreams are too big for them folk. Number three, my praise is not contingent upon my circumstance. Woo! I know there's some crazy praises in here. Y'all praise, it doesn't matter what it is. People are like, that is so weird. It's a little loud. It's kind of like, I don't understand. If you knew what they were going through, you'd understand why they're praising like that. If you knew what God delivered them from, if you knew the family structure, if you knew about the abuse when they were young, if you understood what God freed them from, you'd understand why they praise the way they do. Number four, in spite of it all, I'll always have a now praise. Ladies, my prayer for you, the choice that changes everything is that you choose to praise the Lord. You make a choice. It is a concerted effort that your life is founded upon your worship, upon your praise, because you know who God is regardless of circumstance. What does Psalm 34 say? I will bless the Lord most of the time, 83% of the time. I will bless the Lord at all times. Who wrote that? David, the great, great, great grandchild of the woman I'm talking about now. Oh, it was in the blood. Tell somebody it's in the blood. It's in the, it's in the blood. And when did he write it? He wrote it when he, was at the, when he was at the gate of the Philistines and he was about to die. The Bible says he pretended madness before King Abimelech. So David got free from what should have killed him and he wrote a psalm that said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continue continually be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast of the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. That's somebody that got a crazy deliverance, so they gave a crazy praise. Every now and then your praise needs to be crazy. It's not something you need to try to figure out. You can't worry about what the woman next to you is going to think. In fact, the last 30 seconds of this sermon need to be dedicated to you giving God a crazy praise. You may want to put your smartphone device and your Bible down and we're going to actually lift up a praise in here if God has ever freed you, delivered you, healed you, touched you, covered you, protected you, strengthened you, elevated you. This is the moment to give him a crazy praise, a now praise. I choose praise. I choose worship. I choose joy. Circumstance won't change my choice. Tears won't change my choice. Job lost it all, but he still worshiped. David lost his son. He still worshiped because God doesn't change even if circumstance does. I will bless the Lord. There's a choice that changes everything. And it's a choice that you get to make right now for the rest of this conference that no matter what phone calls you get, what emails and text messages you get, you will not be moved from the posture of praise. You will not be moved from the posture of worship because the posture of worship is a position of power because as long as you're worshiping in spirit and in truth, your heavenly father must show up and let God arise and his enemies be scattered. And there's no devil in hell that can stand when you are a worshiper. This is the choice that changes everything. And so, as I go, I'm giving you 13 seconds to give God a praise that's worthy of the choice you've made.